Hey, lovely viewers welcome to my channel show out. A whirlwind of drama grips Genoa City as tensions soar in a shocking series of events. Phyllis goes ballistic over Daniel's arrest, but her fury ignites an explosive clash with none other than Victor. Meanwhile, as Sharon faces a harrowing arrest, Nate's life changes forever, and Diane's secretive takeover plot thickens. In the midst of it all, Kyle is alarmed, Sally embarks on a bold new career move, and Lily holds her ground. Will Tracy make a plan to rescue her family before it's too late? And when Halloween night brings an unexpected visitor to Sharon's door, everything changes. With Tucker possibly making a fast track to Genoa City, this week is a powder keg you can't afford to miss. Phyllis loses it at Daniel's arrest, and Nikki confronts Victor in a nasty way. Diane conspires with Victor, Phyllis calls Michael, and Jack stuns Nikki on today's episode of The Young and the Restless. When Nikki gets to the Abbott residence, Jack informs her that he doesn't believe he can save his marriage to Diane. She apologizes. According to Nikki, she worries about him. Jack takes offense by the statement, I fear you may resume using drugs to dull your suffering. According to Nikki, his marriage ended in public. In addition, Jabot is in a state of chaos, and there is the matter with Kyle. She now fears that his problem started with the night in the hotel room. Jack promises her that he will not use drugs. He is invited to a meeting by Nikki. Jack reiterates that he will remain sober. Today, he will give his sponsor a call. He will always have Nikki's support. Jack is requesting that Victor get his claws out of my son. Acting confused, Nikki claims she doesn't understand what he's talking about. Victor has kept it a secret, and Jack knows it. He informs her that Kyle was pressured to steal from Jabot by Victor, who is Glissade's covert investor. Because he assisted her in getting sober, this is all about hurting him. Audra acknowledged that he had thrown her aside after using her to get control of Glissade. She has no justification for lying. Nikki curses. He has withheld yet more thing from her. Victor's refusal to tell her, in Jack's opinion, is more evidence that this isn't a business matter. Victor is retaliating against him for assisting her by using Glissade and Kyle. Claire and Kyle talk about Harrison being the only person wearing a costume at a party while they are in the park. Naturally, she made it work. Kyle claims that his son has complete faith in her. Claire wonders if he also believes in her. She is aware that he is bothered by something. Kyle doesn't want to cause her any trouble. Perhaps Claire can help. According to Kyle, it has to do with the intense argument his parents had. It got so terrible that his father dismissed his mother from Jabot and she moved out. She doubled down when he confronted her. How could their perception of her have been so incorrect? Kyle informs Claire that his mother, not him or his father, returned for wealth and influence. He has no idea why he was so foolish as to believe she had changed. Claire is aware of the profound effect this has on his life. It wasn't until it was filled that she realized the size of the void her mother had left in her life. She understands Kyle's pain at Diane's dismissal, it felt like she was rejecting him once more. Kyle laments that she easily shoved him aside to gain power. She put her aspirations ahead of him and his father. Claire is certain that she must love Kyle because she could see the anguish in his eyes. She believes that this could lead to something positive because he feels sympathy for his father. Perhaps they can reconcile and get well. Kyle claims that he and Jack had a conversation, and she is correct, it appeared that he intended to mend their differences. He was unable to take the step. He was hindered by his pride. Claire believes he might need some time to take it all in. This divide feels strange, according to Kyle. Claire believes she understands Diane's motivations. Diane pours a drink in her club suite. 
someone knocks on her door, it's Tracy. Tracy explains she's there as a worried sister-in-law and brought her some profiterol when Diane invites her in. She should enjoy the honeymoon period with Alan, Diane advises, as it won't last. Tracy believes that the distance between her and Jack may be repaired. They're done, according to Diane. She should avoid becoming involved as much as possible. Tracy has never witnessed Jack behave in such a manner. Diane believes he has good reason to be angry. She returned with a plan, and she nearly got away with it. Tracy is not convinced. Diane maintains that she went to all lengths to regain her former life. Tracy has noticed her transformation. She has put a lot of effort into proving herself, so why the abrupt change? Diane says, I am ambitious. I am tired of having to prove myself and pretend to be something I'm not. Tracy has witnessed her affection for her son and is aware that Harrison and she have no ulterior motives. Diane is certain that Kyle is relieved that she is leaving the boy's life. Why this has changed so abruptly is beyond Tracy's comprehension. Chance begins reading Daniel his rights in the club entryway. Phyllis stands in their way. Chance threatens to arrest her as well. When he takes off the handcuffs, Phyllis cries and screams that he is forcing her son into jail. Christine enters and yells, wait a second, she claims to be there on Daniel's behalf. This is crazy, says Phyllis. Christine will see to it that the electric chair is provided for him. He called her, Daniel claims. Why did you call Christine? Phyllis exclaims, Christine tells Phyllis to stop talking and Daniel to keep quiet. She promises to meet Daniel at the courthouse. She will quickly have him released on bond because this is all circumstantial. Is everyone going crazy? Phyllis wants to know. Daniel must be insane to recruit Christine, according to Phyllis. As he puts on the cuffs, Daniel warns Chance not to break his bracelet from Lucy, which he must do by the book. As Chance ushers Daniel out the door, Phyllis promises to help him get out of this situation. Don't you dare think you're going to ruin my son's life, she cautions Christine, adding that neither she nor Daniel had time for their typical banter. Daniel doesn't need someone who is merely attempting to gain favor with his father, according to Phyllis, who is furious. She makes fun of Christine for being a groupie and flinging her underwear on stage. Though I really hope it doesn't come to that, Christine says as she leaves, and Phyllis answers the phone. Christine must go save her kid. She informs someone that she must see them. Life or death is at stake. Jack informs Nikki at the Abbott residence that his problems with Kyle are at their worst point ever. It's possible that his actions have destroyed any goodwill between them. That has been fostered by Victor. According to Nikki, Diane was the one who let him go from Jabot. Jack supported her. They discuss Diane's motivations for returning. Her intentions are definitely not honorable, according to Jack. He tells Nikki that she is not responsible for Victor's actions. Jack is informed by Nikki that he put his life in danger to rescue hers. It's disgusting that Victor would use that as a justification for misbehavior. Jack advises him to be prepared for reprisals. Kyle asks Claire at the park why she believes his mother betrayed the family. She claims that she genuinely thinks she loves him and his father and that she was brought up to read people. Perhaps Jack misinterpreted her intentions and, since it hurt, fiercely reinforced what he was saying without meaning to. With both of his parents, Kyle acknowledges that he has done that. Diane assures Tracy in her apartment that she will not return to Jack. She no longer apologizes for wanting it all. In addition to wanting to be Jack's wife, she also sought a prominent position at Jabot. When a man wants both, he doesn't apologize. Tracy concurs that a double standard exists. Victor is the person Diane compares herself to. She desires what she desires. 
it's too terrible for Jack and Kyle if they can't manage that. They must think that her ambition and her love for them can coexist. Tracy makes her way to the exit. Diane assures her that she is deserving of every happiness. So does my brother, replies Tracy. You do, too. Phyllis uses her phone in the club to read about Daniel's arrest. She informs Michael that her son is being falsely accused as he enters. She asks him to go look at their proof. He can guess who she's referring to, the inept boob Daniel hired. Christine cannot win a murder case, according to Phyllis. Michael asserts that he is entitled to choose his own lawyer. Christine is very good. According to Phyllis, Christine despises her and will drop the case. Daniel is fingerprinted, has mug pictures taken, and puts Lucy's friendship bracelet in an evidence packet at the police station. Nikki arrives at Victor's workplace. It's a pleasant surprise, he says. After they speak, she wonders if he will still feel that way. She wants to know if he is a covert investor in Glissade. Who said that to you? Victor asks, according to Nikki, Jack did. She attacks him, questioning whether he is harming Jack by employing Kyle. Because Jack saved my life, are you trying to cause friction between them? What was she doing with Jack Abbott? Victor asks. He repeatedly warned her to avoid him. According to Nikki, that is not his decision. Victor counters, it's damn right. You and I share a home. Nikki claims that nothing he says will make him any less of her close friend than the previous time he pushed her off the blasted wagon. He is in pain over the dissolution of his marriage, so she went to him to offer her support. Victor points out that he agitated her while feigning to wipe away the tears. Jack nearly killed her that night in the hotel room, he laments. According to Nikki, he saved me, Victor claims that she saved both him and herself. Victor is accused by Nikki of attempting to hold him accountable for that evening. Victor asserts that he is a failure, and he is damn correct, Victor doesn't want her to help Jack, so Nikki hisses, you are impossible. Are you serious? How about relocating to live with him? Kyle tells Claire in the park that he's surprised Diane didn't make an effort to comfort him. Claire believes she was attacked. She would have her defenses up, as Kyle can see. He is reminded by Claire that hurt is the root of anger. If she stopped loving him, it wouldn't hurt her. Kyle believes her anger stems from her loss of wealth and influence. Claire believes that he can reunite with her and resume their family life. Christine would never throw this or any case out of pettiness or revenge, Michael assures Phyllis at the club. Phyllis begs, this is my son. Michael responds that it's also Danny's son. She is aware of Christine's feelings on Daniel's father. He informs the redhead that although she is afraid, this is not how he should be helped. He will monitor the situation and intervene if necessary, but if Daniel is innocent, that will not occur. When Michael learns that Phyllis believes Sharon is framing Daniel, he is shocked. Mother's intuition is to blame. That's not acceptable in court, Michael informs her. That isn't logical. Phyllis claims that she has been attacking Daniel for weeks and has been totally out of control. She will have to find a way to let Chance know that she despises Daniel more than she despises me. The sound of this bothers Michael. How is she going to accomplish that? Phyllis gives a shrug. She is cautioned by Michael not to meddle in the investigation. That's not what Phyllis said she would do. Michael expresses gratitude to her for providing him with plausible deniability. He cautions her against attempting to make up proof because he is her buddy. She doesn't need to make anything up, according to Phyllis. That bitch will stop at nothing to prove that she has been slandering her kid. Tracy discovers Jack seated at his laptop at the Abbott residence. He moans when she tells him she went to see Diane. She was powerless to stop it. 
Jack informs her that she is not the one who can keep their marriage intact. Tracy believed she could assist. That's a theme today, Jack murmurs, adding that Nikki also paid her a visit. According to Tracy, everyone can tell how much Diane loves him and how much he loves her. She can't fix them, Jack reiterates. Tracy tried, but she couldn't. She saw a lady who is even righteous, injured, and angry. He's true, despite Diane's aversion to admitting it, she no longer cares about anyone but herself. Diane glances at her wedding photo on her phone in her suite. It rings. Victor is here. She said she hoped he would give her a call. Does he want to assist her in punishing Jack? He is intrigued. Good, Diane responds, because I want retribution and I don't care who I have to harm to get it. The next update for today. Diane's takeover plot, Nate's search, and Sharon's terrifying arrest. According to the Young and the Restless spoilers for Tuesday, October 29, Sharon Newman will continue to play phony around Nick Newman despite feeling guilty about Daniel Romilotti Jr.'s incarceration. When Sharon is by herself, she will dream that Christine Blair and Chance Chancellor are present to discuss the matter with her. Daniel and Phyllis Summers will arrive to chastise Sharon after Chance arrests her on the basis of fresh evidence, but Sharon will awaken in shock and realize it was a nightmare. Sharon will stress that she can't do this and that she can't live this way while sobbing on the stairs on Tuesday's episode of YNR. They will plan at society once Christine releases Daniel on bail. Christine will believe that they may use Sharon and other credible suspects to raise reasonable doubts, even if she will find it difficult to accept Phyllis's hypothesis that Sharon is guilty. After criticizing Chance once more for Daniel's incarceration, Phyllis will meet with Christine and find out some startling information. Christine will acknowledge that she doesn't believe Phyllis's notion, but it may be helpful if they could show the jurors Sharon and other potential offenders. Phyllis will ask Christine what she needs her to do when she advises putting aside their conflict for Daniel's benefit. Diane Jenkins Abbott will pressure Victor Newman to appoint her as Glissade's manager and dismiss Kyle Abbott from Newman Enterprises. It will serve as a means of retaliation against Jack Abbott and Kyle. Diane's offer will pique Victor's interest, but he will require evidence of her sincerity. Victor will let Diane decide out how she is going to provide the proof. Diane will be prepared to provide Victor with proof that she has entirely turned on Jack and Kyle because she will insist that she is all in. At one point, Victor will confess in private that he called Diane, but Nikki Newman will interrupt and lash out over her visit. Victor will pretend that everything is under control, but Nikki won't like that statement. Kyle will eventually meet Jack at the bar at the GCAC, where they will share a drink. Jack will acknowledge that he will be returning from Paris with Ashley Abbott, but he will be concerned about the drama in the family that awaits him at home. Since Kyle has been reconsidering his decision to work with Harrison Abbott, Redding Munsell, he may be able to assist with the changeover. When Jack learns that Kyle and Harrison are actually staying in the Abbott mansion, he will be happy. There will be greater tension when Diane strolls over. Jack's suggestion that Diane is leaving town is followed by Kyle's suggestion that she should return to her previous identity as Taylor Jensen, since she is only capable of lying. When Nate Hastings welcomes Amy Lewis to his home, she will confess that she has been hiding something for years, something even Nate's father, Nathan Hastings Sr., was unaware of. After seeing Nathan for the last time, Amy discovered she was pregnant, but by that point, she had fallen in love with another guy, Jackson. Amy gave birth to a son called Damien after tricking Jackson into thinking he was the father. When Nate discovers that he has a half-brother who is unaware of his existence, Amy will explain that even after Jackson's death, she couldn't bear to tell Damien the truth. Additionally, Amy will reveal that up until a few years ago, Damien would constantly seek out to her despite his propensity to disappear. Amy will need Nate's assistance in finding Damien because she lost sight of him. 
Amy will disclose that she has leukemia and requests an opportunity to say goodbye before it's too late. Additionally, since he won't have anyone left once Amy leaves, she will want Nate to support and mentor his older brother. Amy intends to remain in town while she waits for Nate to make a decision because he will need some time to consider all of this. The next update for today. Daniel's time is up, right? Is there nothing left for him? According to Tuesday, October 29th spoilers for The Young and the Restless, Chance appears to be growing more certain that Daniel killed Heather, and Sharon is adamant about remaining silent, indicating that Daniel is being surrounded. No matter where you are, come out. Chance believes he knows who killed Heather because of how well Sharon and Ghost Cameron framed Daniel for the crime. Daniel also told Danny that he anticipates a knock on his door at any point. Daniel has been unsuccessful in persuading Sharon to acknowledge that she is more knowledgeable than she is revealing. Apparently, shortly after Lucy left, Daniel was stopped at the GCAC rather than knocking on the door. Faces you recognize. Nate had no idea why Amy Lewis had contacted him so abruptly. She stated that she wished to provide him with some keepsakes of Nate's biological father. She's had decades to accomplish it, though. Why now, then? Amy makes a special trip to Genoa City and provides Nate with knowledge that has the potential to affect the lives of many people, giving Nate the opportunity to learn the truth at last. The father is the expert. When Victor fired Nikki and offered her job to Adam, she wasn't happy. Victor's deceit and manipulation of Lily did not sit well with Nikki. And when Victor agreed to hear Diane's plan to bring down Kyle and, consequently, Jack, Nikki wasn't exactly overjoyed. Nikki's opinion of Victor's dismissal of her didn't matter to him. Victor didn't give a damn about Nikki's opinion of his portrayal of Lily. Furthermore, he wasn't too curious about Nikki's thoughts on his listening to Diane. Victor still does what he wants to anybody he wants. And you're the one who is mistaken if you don't like his explanation. Of course. The next update for today. Nate's life-altering news, Phyllis's intervention, and Daniel's panic. According to Tuesday, October 29th teasers on The Young and the Restless, Daniel Romilotti Jr. will be confined to jail while he awaits Christine Blair's legal wizardry. Although Christine has a lot of faith in her legal skills, she may be surprised at how difficult it is to get Daniel released on bail. Daniel will be in a panic regardless of Christine's accomplishment. Daniel will be concerned that this frame-up could land him in jail for many years after learning that further evidence was discovered in his flat. Naturally, Phyllis Summers is not going to allow Daniel to be punished for a crime he did not commit. This is particularly true given that Phyllis firmly feels Sharon Newman is to blame. On Tuesday's YNR episode, Sharon will be under more pressure than ever as Phyllis steps up her game for Daniel's sake. It might make Sharon even more certain that she must eradicate Phyllis's menace once and for all. Since Amy Lewis will be returning to GC as promised, Nate Hastings will let her in. When Amy discloses a secret that she has likely been keeping for years, Nate will be confronted with some news that will change his life. Amy might have given birth to Nate's child off-screen decades ago if she became pregnant by Nate's father, Nathan Hastings Sr., before she left town. We'll keep you updated on whether a family meeting is imminent because there have been rumors that Nate might have a surprise half-brother. Victor Newman will then defend himself against criticism and maintain his position. If Devin Hamilton Winters issues further grievances, Victor can experience increased criticism for his treatment of Lily Winters. Victor will feel that everything will be all right if Lily ends up working at Winters, even though Lily herself may insult him once more. Nikki Newman may also criticize Victor once more for his scheme against Jack Abbott especially if she learns of his connection to Diane Jenkins Abbott. However, if Michael Baldwin learns that Diane and Victor are in a partnership, he may see problems in the making. 
Victor will make it plain that he is in charge and that whatever he says goes on Tuesday's show, regardless of who disputes his judgment. Victor is working on several plans and will offer accurate forecasts at every stage. The next update for today. After Young and the Restless on October 29th, Tracy needs to plan how to save her family. It's so absurd that it might work. Every character on The Young and the Restless is adored by Tracy. Her greatest act of kindness was when Tracy permitted a dying Victor to have Colleen's heart even though Victor was the cause of her daughter's death. As seen by her willingness to consider Diane's perspective on the breakup with Jack in the October 28th episode, Tracy always strives to see the best in everyone. However, what if Tracy chooses to go one step further and resolves to mend her brother's marriage? How we arrived. According to Tracy, Jabot is the main source of conflict between Diane and Jack. Kyle told his dad to give it to his mother when Jack granted Diane the job, but now he is sulky. In order to get Audra fired from Glissade, Kyle resigned and started working for Victor, which included obtaining sensitive Chabot material and giving it to Victor. A man like a prince. In any case, Diane wants Kyle punished and finds it hard to comprehend Jack's disagreement. Save me. According to Tracy, Chabot is the reason why Jack, Diane, and Kyle are still at each other's throats. How can this issue be resolved? First and foremost, take Jabot out of the picture. Ashley is unable to take over the business she has previously ran since she is currently battling mental health issues. Only baby sister Tracy remains. Tracy had previously operated Jabot for a short while and found it to be rather enjoyable. So why not once more? Naturally, for the benefit of the family. In order for Jack and Diane to concentrate on one another and mending their relationship with Kyle, Tracy might take over the management of Chabot. They would also have more time to spend with Harrison. Additionally, Tracy and Alan would have more motivation to remain in Genoa City if she ran Chabot. That's assuming Alan is actually Alan and not Martin, of course. The next update for today. Lily's refusal to cave, Sally's new job, and Kyle's alarm bells. According to Wednesday, October 30th spoilers for The Young and the Restless, Lily Winters will run across Nikki Newman, who might make another attempt to work with her. Although Nikki hopes Lily would be content to be a team player, she still wants to manage Chancellor alone. Naturally, Lily will not reconsider taking such a significant step back. Lily will put a lot of effort into her relationship with Nikki because she is certain that Jill Abbott will fire Billy Abbott and restore her to leadership. Since he informed Devin Hamilton Winters that he preferred Lily at Winters, Victor Newman seemed to have other ideas. If Lily's relationship with Jill doesn't work out, that could be where she ends up in the end. Kyle Abbott and Victor will meet in the interim, and Victor may raise some red flags during their encounter. It appears that Victor will alert Kyle in some way, thus this may entail providing Diane Jenkins' Abbott news updates. Will Victor acknowledge that Diane wants to become the CEO of Glissade herself? Unless Kyle can demonstrate that he is the more qualified candidate to defeat Jack Abbott, Victor may indicate that he will give Diane's proposal careful thought. Victor might leave him feeling conflicted on Wednesday's Y&R episode because Kyle has recently begun to show more affection for Jack. This might be Victor's attempt to test Kyle and try to ignite a fire inside of him. She will receive an unexpected assignment from Sally Spectra. Since Sally will eventually have a new job, this might have anything to do with Marchetti Z or maybe the interior design that Billy Abbott requested. However, it's possible that Sally's goal will entail helping out with a few Halloween costumes. It's possible that Billy will want help with Johnny Abbott's punk rocker style or something like. Stay watching to see if love blossoms in the future, as our YNR forecasts suggest that Billy and Sally will continue to bond. The next update for today. Sharon's entire world is turned upside down by a startling visit on Halloween night. 
Watch out for the witching hour. With Halloween night approaching, that's the advice we're providing Sharon on Young and Restless this week. Young and Restless spoilers hint that Sharon will have an unexpected visitor on the October 31st episode, as if the situation she's in now wasn't enough to handle. We can't help but believe that this might completely alter the course of the plot. Sharon is accustomed to handling unforeseen guests. Since she moved into her house on the Newman Ranch, there has been a steady flow of both welcome and unwanted knocks on the door. As is common in soap operas, they occasionally even enter without being invited. In a recent development, she even made out with a visitor who was later shown to be a hallucination. The constant flow of traffic coming in and going out hasn't really affected Sharon. However, our Sharon might have a serious scare with this week's visitor. Why? The reason for this could be that the caller has already passed away. Not that Sharon is unfamiliar with handling unearthly visitation either. Since her passing decades ago, her late daughter Cassie has been regularly appearing, ready to offer guidance, consolation, and motivation. The only instance in which Cassie's appearances were truly startling was when they were Mariah, Cassie's twin sister, who had been unintentionally hired by an unrepentant Victor Newman to gaslight her own mother. The blonde, who fatally stabbed her previous stalker, has also started spending more time with him. In fact, Cameron's zombie persona has taken up residence in both her living room and her thoughts, as well as in his blood-stained clothes. The unkempt dark angel on her shoulder seems to follow her everywhere. However, Cameron maintains that he is actually Sharon and not himself. Her subconscious brought forth her dark half, if you will. Thus, while not quite a ghost, she is undoubtedly battling a phantasm or apparition. Sharon seemed to be about to conquer that monster and tell Nick that she was responsible for Heather's death, but the mention of Phyllis's name sent her reeling back into her derangement. Yes, she is the one person who can be sure to make Sharon see a red, and the old demons came back at once. With a somewhat ominous expression on her face, Sharon concluded that Phyllis ought to go to the hereafter with her ex-daughter-in-law. Sharon changed from being the lady sobbing in Nick's arms that she could take it no more to becoming a ruthless killer when Daniel was taken to jail despite his apoplectic mother's protests. This gets us to the present, where on Halloween night our unexpected guest is scheduled to show up at Sharon's doorstep, or possibly through the door into her living room. In order for Daniel to be released, be reunited with his daughter, and grieve, we are certain that the caller will be the ghost of a recently deceased person who has come to act as the anti-Cameron and coerce Sharon into confessing. Veil vale Bloom hinted that Heather was still alive and that Halloween night would be the ideal occasion for a startling visit from the afterlife. Naturally, Sharon's remorse may present itself in a vision of the woman she feels she killed, or the visitation may not actually be the deceased Heather. However, we enjoy the notion of a haunting on All Hallows' Eve, especially as it has the potential to completely alter the course of this novel. Will Sharon be persuaded to come clean by Heather's ghost? To find out, you will need to watch the Halloween episode. Hopefully, the authors will give us something to discuss about Pumpkin. The next update for today. Reasons for Tucker's brief visit to Genoa City on Young and the Restless. The wedding of Abby and Devon would benefit from a surprise visitor. Fans haven't seen Tucker McCall on The Young and the Restless in months. On social media, actor Trevor St. John revealed that he was leaving the soap opera. He might, however, be able to return for a small period of time for a unique reason. Abby and Devon's Wedding Abby and Devon are getting married soon. Some family members are going to be there. Lorraine Lorette will return as Devon's sister, Anna Hamilton, while Chain Lawson will play his birth mother, Yolanda Harmony Hamilton. On his special day, Devon also wants his father. Tucker might surprise everyone by driving Abby and Devon to their wedding in a nice automobile rather than a helicopter. It would be the ideal means of re-establishing contact with his son. 
Tucker's attendance wouldn't be wholly unexpected. He might be involved in Victor's covert scheme to eliminate Billy. Victor has other people on his list of targets for retaliation. Additionally, the patriarch wishes to humiliate Jack and Diane in public. Tucker doesn't require an invitation at all. After all, everyone is welcome to attend the wedding. He would be the best party crasher ever. Tucker may be Victor's pawn to annihilate his adversaries. Any adversary of Victor's is likewise Tucker's adversary. This is one thing they have in common, despite their animosity for one another. Get in touch with Ashley again? Tucker might be going to Devon and Abby's wedding for another reason. Ashley might be there. Fans would be seeing her for the first time since she battled dissociative identity disorder. McCall hinted that he would make a comeback. It would provide the closure that fans seek and now would be the ideal moment. They are not required to reconcile. They may simply make things right. What do you think? Should Tucker attend Abby and Devin's wedding, in your opinion? Tell us in the space provided for comments. Thanks for watching this videos. Please hit the subscribe button for more updated news.